On the appointed night, we came by truck from various refugee camps to the appointed beach somewhere on the Italian coast. The boys of the Haganah had built an emergency pier and prepared the rubber embarkation craft. This was the 44th Haganah boat to leave Europe for Palestine since the end of the war, each boat from a different beach. But though the Haganah was experienced, each embarkation was perilous. Emissaries of the Haganah, the self-defense organization of Palestinian Jews, had guided us across all the borders of Europe to this point. Some of us came from Poland, some from Hungary, many from Romania. Some of us had gone through a dozen DP camps, waiting two years for this voyage. Others had left their lands only a few months ago. Not one had a family intact. We came because we could no longer live in Europe, the cemetery of our people. We were 850 sailing on this little boat. The laborious embarkation went on all night long. The last load came aboard at dawn. We knew well of the troubles in Palestine, but we preferred to face death in our own land rather than a living death elsewhere. We said our farewells to Europe. An only survivor, a man alone. We were instructed to remain out of sea. We had come knowing well what conditions were like on these vessels. ways to soften our discomfort no matter where we found ourselves. And so to bed. The first part of the voyage was stormy. Many were sick. But on the third day, the sea was calm and the seasickness was over. There were 150 babies on board. Food was distributed by groups three times daily with special rations for children.
Romanian doctor and his wife, a Polish machinist, a Hungarian widow. She was saved by Polish peasants, an accountant. The partisans saved him. She found her brother. One day a meeting was called. Only half of us could find places on deck. The rest remained below. The Palestinian said he would like to sail us right into Tel Aviv Harbor with colors flying and a band playing ashore. But when we approach Palestine, you must hide during every alarm, he told us. It will be stifling down there. This must be done. As yet, the hatches were open. One could breathe. Now we remain below during the day. We showed ourselves on deck only at night, except for special needs. We tried to sleep in the daytime. We knew of the battle on the Exodus. The hunger strikers on the La Spezia were arisen. We knew we would almost certainly be caught and taken to Cyprus. But for us, Cyprus was on the way to Palestine. Surely now, after the United Nations decision, we would not have to wait long in Cyprus. And as on every ship, some prayed, and many dreamed that perhaps, perhaps we would succeed in landing in Eretz Israel. A woman from Krakow was with child. The doctor had served in the Russian army. He was from Vilna. were completely closed for several hours. The British patrol had found us off the Egyptian shore. The air was hot. Before noon, the British warship appeared. We still hoped the British would take our ship for a freighter. The voice came from the warship. What ship are you? Turkish. I won't send a boarding party to verify your identity. That is impossible. I believe you are Jews. When you enter Palestine waters, I shall use the overwhelming force at my command, if necessary, to board you. We understand. Khadirim, there is no use in cycling down there any longer. They will follow us. They know we are Jews. And so we came out. Many were sick and dazed after the long hours in the hot and airless hold of the ship. Now we saw that the pains we had British had only to lie in wait near the goal, a plane on a routine mission of inspection, and a warship waiting with no other occupation than to track us down. The doctors took care of the exhausted women. And the warship remained with us. The young men wanted to prepare to resist, but others said, our ship is filled with women and babies. This time, we must not resist. We made ready our banners and our flags.
We sent up our flag. Tachidanu, the Hebrew name means you cannot frighten us. The Turkish name was Jettison. All day and all night the British warship followed us. And in the morning there were three, four, And there was the coast of Palestine. Now we were in Palestine waters. The British ordered us to halt. The British were told there would be no resistance because of the mothers and babies aboard. came onto our ship. We did not lift a hand against them. We only looked at them. They said this was a model operation. The ship was taken over. Open the door, Bevin. Your Tommies want to get out, and we are coming in. We were towed into Haifa Harbor. We saw the city of Haifa, the new city on Mount Carmel, built by Jews. A company of paratroopers waited to handle us. This was our glimpse of Eretz Israel. We had known it would be so, and we had made our hearts ready. Yet for some of us, this moment was terribly difficult. We tried to keep in mind that we would soon be back. We would live here as a free people. The Empire rival was there after carrying the refugees of the Exodus back to Germany. In three hours, we were inside her cages and on our way to Cyprus. 